If you are receiving this transmission, you are the resistance declaring war on the New World Order. TruthRadioShow.com And welcome to the Dan Bedani Show at TruthRadioShow.com and welcome to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12 in this in-depth comprehensive study of the Bible. So guys, um, yeah, if you've got a Bible, please open it up. And before we get going, uh, we do a specific Bible study approach. That's number one, we pray for wisdom and understanding. So if you want to join me in a quick prayer here. So Jesus, Yeshua, Messiah, we come before you and ask you to forgive us individually the sins that we've committed. And thank you for everything. And Heavenly Father, we pray for everybody here. Give them comfort, strength, and encouragement, faith, and everything that we need, Lord, to survive this life and move on to the next one with you. And protect us all from the forces of evil, Heavenly Father. And we ask you to bless this platform and bless everybody here listening to your word today. We ask you to help, I'm sorry, we ask you to give, to give us Holy Spirit to help disseminate your information today, to write your word upon our hearts in this case here, 1 Corinthians chapter 12 today. We love you, Heavenly Father. In your name we pray, amen. So that's the most important thing you do before you even touch the Bible. Uh, number two is we read the scripture in context. Very important to understand that because context is key. And we don't frog hop all over the Bible, guys. We read the whole context of what we're talking about. And let the scripture interpret scripture. So if you're new to the program, guys, um, first of all, if you just tune in now, I would highly suggest to go tune into chapter 1 and catch up to what's going on uh, so it makes sense to you. So this is Paul's letter to the Church of Corinthians uh, because there's major division going on in this Church of Corinth. And uh, so Paul is here uh, setting business straight, if you will. So if you've got a Bible, open it up and we use the King James. So uh, now concerning the spiritual gifts, brethren, I would have not you ignorant. So he's addressing all these spiritual gifts that the Lord gives us, right, through the Holy Spirit. So ye know that you were Gentiles carried away into these dumb idols, even as if they were led. Wherefore, I give you to understand that no man speaketh by the Spirit of, the God, of God calls Jesus accursed, and that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord but by the Holy Spirit. So emphasizing here about the Holy Spirit, how powerful and how important it is to have the Holy Spirit within you. Because when you say Jesus is Lord and you feel it and you mean it, guess what? That's the Holy Spirit in you. Because once you come to the cross, you invited the Holy Spirit into you. And that's why we got every night we got to say our prayers, guys. Unlike the dispensational churches out there, say, oh yeah, once saved, always saved. And, you know, you could do whatever you want. No, that's not the case. Because... Even as a Christian, a follower of Jesus Christ, if you live in sin and divulge in sin, the Holy Spirit's going to leave you. This, your body is the temple. And if you want the Holy Spirit to dwell in, in your temple, it's got to be uh, pure. That's why daily we've got to confess and repent of our sins. So now, there are diversities of gifts but the same spirit. So uh, Paul's saying there's a number of gifts. There's Everybody's got different gifts. Now here's the thing, too. If all of us had the same gift, what good would we be? Because we're a giant team for the Lord. It's like a basketball team, right? You build a basketball team, and you get one guy good at rebounding, one guy good at uh, shooting uh, you know, three-pointers, another one uh, good in the paint, uh, another one good, you know, great at defense. If everybody had the same gift, the, the team would never go anywhere. So you got to build a uh, championship team up with people of different talents to put them all into one team. That's why we're here in the Word of God, you know, like for instance, right, this is what I'm good at. The Lord's given me this gift to do what I'm doing here. Now, however, there's some of you out there who are great uh, writing articles, writing um, kind of uh, blurbs and everything else to, to help um, bring the witness to people. There's some of you here that are amazing at street ministry. There's some of you are amazing at you're writing songs and glorifying God. 
So you get the point. There's people with different talents. But we're all of the same spirit. So, and there are differences of administrations, but the same Lord. There are differences. So there's a bunch of different administrations, but it's the same Lord, Jesus Christ. And there are diversities of operations, but is the same God in which we work in all. So diversities, which means many. Yeah, many. There's people who diff diversity means, uh, I'm sorry, uh, a number of different things, but of one. You know what I'm saying? So, again, it's the same thing. Uh, there's a bunch of different people in the operations that do different things. A bunch of people in administrations that, that do different things. But a bunch of people with the gift of uh, these gifts here, but do have different gifts. So you get the point. Paul's saying that there's uh, differences, you know what I mean? In other words, in diversities, in which is uh, different things. Everybody's got uh, a special talent or uh, a job assigned to them for, right? So you can't have everybody be president, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, you need a vice president, you need a secretary, uh, attorney general, things like that, you know what I'm saying? So that, this is kind of what he's saying here. Uh, but the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. So, the, to manifest the Holy Spirit within you, like I said earlier, you got to be a believer. you got to be cleansed from sin. If you want to feel the manifestation of the Holy Spirit within you, that's what you got to do. But the manifestation of the Spirit, let's talk about the Holy Spirit, is given to every man, every one of us. You know what the amazing thing about this? This one Holy Spirit, everybody watching right now, we could call upon the Holy Spirit, right? And that very same Holy Spirit will be in every one of us, with every one of us, at the same time. Omnipresent. And I know it's hard for humans to comprehend things like that. How could one thing be with a bunch of different people in different places? Well, <laughs> God's not limited to by our sciences. God's not limited to by our laws. So the day you learn, especially with the Bible here, the day you learn to take the laws of physics, the laws of sciences, everything you learn in school and everything else, uh, limitations of humans and all that, the day you learn to get rid of all of them is the day you understand and fully visualize what God's about. Yeah, I mean, when you go through the Bible and the supernatural stuff, most people can't understand it. They think, oh, this has got to be some kind of folklore, um, uh, some kind of fairy tales, because they can't comprehend it. Yeah, sure, they're book smart. They were smart in school and everything, because the school system, what they do is, yeah, they teach you a lot of stuff, but however, it puts a box over your head, because you are ingrained in your head with limitations set by mankind. You gotta, everything you've learned, guys, you got to throw out the window when it comes to God. There's no limitations of God. Good example, right? Yeah, a human can't um, jump over a, a giant building or a can't, can't just soar through the air like a Superman, right? Because there's laws of physics, there's gravity, different things we have to go, we have as human beings, right? But with God, guess what? All things are possible. It is written that way. So, yes, if God literally wanted to make you jump over a giant builder and uh, fly like Superman, guess what? You're jumping over that building and flying like Superman. And it's not even uh, exaggerate. That's exactly what you'll be doing if God wants it that way. So every limitation you got to uh, just throw out the window. But again, uh, but the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. For to one is given by the spirit of the word of wisdom, and another the word of knowledge by the same spirit. So people have wisdom and people have knowledge. So now there's two different things. Wisdom is having like wisdom in the word. You know, like you know, I'm sorry, wisdom is to know what to do at certain times. You're like, they say wise people, you know, they know how to uh, surviving life and everything else. Now, knowledge is having the ability to think of things. Uh, in other words, like if somebody asks you a question uh, that relates to other things besides what that we're talking about, you have knowledge to pull things up. Knowledge to like remember different things from different subjects. 
if this makes any sense to you. And if it doesn't, guys, put it in the comment section, not the live chat, but the comment section, and I'll try to explain it better. But long story short, there's uh, people who have the spirit of the word of wisdom and people with the spirit of the word of knowledge by the same spirit. To another, there's faith by the same spirit. Some people have more faith than others. And it's not saying the person's better or nothing like that, no. Because remember the scripture says, with faith of a mustard seed, you can move, move mountains. Faith is important. When you believe, guess what? When you pray, guess what you need to have? Faith. I bring this up a lot. Remember, um, I think it was Matthew. Uh, the woman who, I guess she was unclean. So she seen Jesus walking through the crowd and she couldn't get anywhere near him. So she was saying to herself, if I could just touch his tassel on his uh, gown, my garment, if I could just touch that tassel, I'll be made clean. So she managed to squeeze through the crowd and fight through it, and uh, she reached out and grabbed the tassel that was hanging off his uh, garment. Jesus stopped him, like, because he felt the countenance leave him, and he asked who touched him. And she, he turned around to him because I did. And he goes, tell, he, what did he tell her? It's but your faith. Your faith is that what um, made you clean. He already knew what she wanted. And of course, he knew he touched, who touched her because he already knew also what she, why she did it. Because right away he says, uh, yeah, your faith is what made you clean. Your faith in me. Because she had that faith that she could just reach out and grab that garment. She could be made clean. If you had that kind of faith, you could do anything. But yes, yeah, people uh, who have this faith as a gift but it's from the same spirit. To another, the gifts of healing by the same spirit. Now, I'm not talking about those uh, blokes on TV, guys. These um, pop-up ministries all over the television. Uh, you got people jumping for Jesus. Like, you know, I don't mean to make fun of it, but yeah. Uh, these people, they operate with the Kundalini spirit. Half the stuff's all fake. Just to make money and for good TV ratings. I'm talking about real people in the, in the Lord, in the, in the Word in the body of Christ that could actually heal people. But it's through God. It's through the same spirit. People have these gifts. But you got to understand too, that these gifts, yeah, they're given to us, but it's through the Holy Spirit. The same Holy Spirit that Paul's trying to point out. That's why he keeps saying, by the same Holy Spirit. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. This is one of my gifts the Lord has blessed me with, prophecy. I wish I had the gift of healing. And when I do these things, my faith goes higher and higher. It's awesome. To another, yeah, work in miracles, uh, another prophecy, another discerning of the spirits. That's a big one right there, and that's what I feel I have as well. Uh, because when you get these people on TV, these... Uh, <laughs> These big Hollywood superstars that claim they've come to Christ and everything else. And when you got people out there preaching and saying certain things that automatically trigger, all right, yeah, this guy or woman, uh, this is not a person of God. They're preaching New Age garbage, and most Christians don't even know what New Age is. Discerning of spirits to know, it's ability to know who's of God and who's not. Spirits means people. And as, as it is written, we have to challenge every spirit to see if they're from God. So that's a lot of us got the, the gift of discernment of spirits. To another, diverse kinds of tongues. It's like uh, different forms of tongues. People have this gift. And, uh, you know, we talk about tongues here and there on the shows and everything else. And to really understand the tongues, we're going to get to that coming up soon in the next several books uh, about talking in tongues. I think it's uh, the Corinthians, I believe. I mean, the uh, Thessalonians, I believe. I, I, mean, I forgot exactly where it is. But we're going to get into the thing about tongues. What uh, tongues are of God and what tongues are not of God. There's a difference. Because remember, there's always a counterfeit spirit to everything that God does. So people would not be misled. And that's why uh, when I started doing the series. I just got sick of hearing the garbage from the mainstream churches, people on TV. 
it just misleading millions and millions and billions, I'm sorry, of people over the years. And I'm like, you know what, I'm, I'm going to take a stand against this. We read it right from the word here. No religious dogma, nothing like that. We read it from the word itself and in context, right? So I'm going to get to that. So to another, the interpretation of tongues. Now the scripture does say if somebody speaks in tongues and if nobody can understand it or there's nobody there to interpret those tongues, they're not of God. We're going to get to that. That's coming up in, um, in this uh, New Testament study here. So people may have a gift of tongues that, uh, that would speak out to everybody else, it sounds like a bunch of gibberish. But if somebody nearby could fully understand it, they'll have a gift to fully understand what they was just said. And you know it's a cool kind of tongues too, is when the angels talk to tongues. Just say you got 30 people from 30 different languages, and they can't speak English or anything like that, or any other uh, language. Everybody in their own tongue could hear in their own language. It's amazing. There's different uh, versions of tongues. But again, uh, all these gifts are the same spirit. But all these worketh that one in a self uh, same spirit, divided into every man severally as he will. Severely, I'm sorry. So again, Paul's saying, but all these that work that one in a self same spirit. So all these gifts are from the same spirit, the Holy Spirit. And dividing every man severally as he will. In other words, he divides it and gives people different uh, gifts and whatnot. For as the body is one and has many members. So, yeah, you got a body. Many members means you got limbs, you got fingers, you got toes. And amongst all other things on your body. Members is pieces to your body, teeth and everything else. It's a member of your body. So your body has is one body, but it has many members to it. And all the members of that one body, being many, are one body. So also is Christ. So this is what I like about Paul, man. Jesus did the same thing. When he explained something. Now, this is the importance of reading the context. Now, if you give somebody this word, verse here, you got to get 10 different people goofing it up. With their own interpretation. Because we're not supposed to lean on our own interpretation. But you read in context, yeah, and I loved it about Jesus and Paul that clearly explained what they were talking about. And they go on to explain in, uh, as an example. Talk about a body, right? Yeah, this Paul gave an example. And Jesus did the parables. and right? There were examples of what he was talking about so you could not possibly misunderstand them. Yeah, just this one verse where you just open interpretation. But when you read it, you, you don't need to interpret it. That's why it's important to read the scripture in context. Context is key. Very important to understand that. So again, he's saying, hey, you know, to clearly explain what he's talking about. For as the body is one, we've got one body, right? But we have many members to it. He has teeth, etc., 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 right? And all the members of that one body being many are one body. It's all part of one body. So also is Christ. For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body. We are the body of Christ. So, I don't, you know I mean, whoever, X amount of people that are saved. Just say all of us, just us, all, uh, everybody that, that's watching the show, right? We're all one body of Christ. Yeah, we're individual bodies, but we're all belong to that one body, the body of Christ. That's the church. That's not a religion. It's not uh, some building headed by a pope or anything. No, we are the church. That's the body of Christ. So for by one spirit, we are all baptized. We all get baptized what? In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We are all one in the body. And it goes on to explain it further. Whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been made all to drink into one spirit. 
So it, clearly saying we're all equal. We're all equal in this part of one body of Christ. Now, grant him, again, he's talked about all these different tongues and everything else, and I'm sorry, different gifts and everything that people got. It doesn't mean anybody's got, you know, better than anybody else. No, we're all of one body. One big team uh, has the right formula to make a championship team, if you want to put it that way, in a sports analogy. For the body is not one member, but many. So that's why it's important to read this in context, because somebody will take that one verse and blew it way out of con uh, context. And here's the thing, too. This is what these scoffers do. Most of these people know darn well what they're doing, or they just don't know how to read, which most of the case they don't know how to read, comp have uh, reading comprehension. So they'll say, oh, look, look. You know, the, you know Paul's saying here, uh, the body is one. It has many members, right? Then they'll go, yeah, look, Paul's saying, oh, the body is not one member, but many. So they'll say that's a contradiction, right? So they'll have somebody read verse 12, and they'll probably butcher it and uh, only show half, right? Then they'll say, oh, look here, Paul says, uh, you know, that's a contradiction. No, because if we read it in context, yeah, no contradiction. So I want to give you guys a tip. There's, uh, there's a lot of scoffers out there. Richard Dawkins, a big one, like very smart when he does this stuff, right? He's like very tactical. And the thing is, most Christians and most people he talks to, they don't know the Bible. So they could easily be fooled by this stuff. These people are devils. That's why we're supposed to be wise as a serpent. Uh, yeah. Wise as doves, something like that. Yeah. Shop, uh, yeah. Calm, yeah. Pe common peaceful as a dove. And yeah, I'm sorry, guys. I'm butchering that up. So. <laughs> You're supposed to be wise, that's what, you know, and show uh, proof in the Bible. Know the scriptures. So you won't be deceived by these people. And if you don't, you know, you know, I can't figure that out, just go read it in context. Then you'll see every time there's no such thing as a contradiction, it's just the people don't have read and comprehension skills, or they do it purposely. So if, the, now again, Paul says, for the body is not one member, but many. It's not a contradiction. Second, again, uh, if you read it over here, he says the body has many members, like teeth and everything else, right? Yeah. So if the foot, now, I think he's talking about the body of Christ now. There's not one many, but many, right? And if the foot shall say, well, it is the body, I'm sorry. See, uh, this just corrected me. I thought I was talking about the body of Christ. Now he's saying, look, legit, saying um, the body is one member, but many. And if the foot shall say, because I am not in the hand, I am not the body. It is therefore not the, of the body. So he's saying this. You, if your foot says to your hand, I'm not, I'm not the hand. So I'm not part of the body. Um, yeah, you are, because you're still attached to me. <coughs> I hope I'm uh, presenting this uh, right so people can understand. So, and if the ear, and the, Paul just goes on, so you cannot misinterpret him. People told me Paul's going to be hard to understand. Yeah, there's a couple of things, but you know what? You get to know Paul and understand his, um, his philosophy, the way he teaches, just like Jesus did. Gives many examples. That's why you need to read in context. And you're going to hear me say that a million times probably in these uh, videos here. And if the ear shall say, because I am not the eye, am I not part of the body? Is it therefore not of the body? Of course it is, yeah. And if the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing go? If the whole were hearing, where would the smelling? See where he's going with this? To show you we need to be of one body, there's many members to it that make up one body. So every member has a different talent. Every member has a purpose that's different from somebody else's. Are you starting to get the picture? And if you're not, please tell, give me the timestamp and put it in the comment section. So, but now has God set the members of every one of them in the body as it has pleased him? So just like your body, one more example. To chew up food, you need teeth. To taste something, you need a tongue. To swallow, you need a throat. 
to smell something. If it's good or not, you need a, what, a nose, right? To get look at your beautiful wife or uh, husband. You need eyes to do that, right? Yeah. You get the point. And if they were all if they were all one member, where would the body be? But now they are many members, but yet one body. And the eye cannot see into the hand. I have no need for thee. Oops, let me plug in my computer. My battery's starting to die on you guys. Oh, there we go. So, so the eye, right, cannot see into the hand. And it says, I have no need for thee. Nor again, the feet, the head to the feet, or have no need for you. So that's basically saying, like, the hand and eye, yeah, they... They are two separate, completely different uh, members of your body. The hand and eye don't um, work with each other. You can't put your hand in the eye, you can't put your eye in the hand. Or your head and your feet, and, you know, vice versa. So nay was no, much more members of the body, which seem to be more feeble or unnecessary. So I just like how it just digs right into this. And, and if you don't get it by now, um, I'm, I don't know what to tell you. But he, he continues more. And those members of the body, which we think to be less honorable, upon these we bestow more abundant honor. And our comely parts have more abundant comeliness. So yeah, we, and it, again, we're using the human body as an example of the body of Christ, right? All of us being part of his church. <laughs> so, yeah, you might think, all right, my earlobes, your earlobes, what do they do? You might think they're useless, but they're important to have for center of balance and uh, different things the earlobes do that you don't mind uh, they think of, right? Fingers are important. There's things on your body that you don't think is too important, you know, whatever, but they're all important to work together. So for our comely parts have no need. But God has tempered the body together, having given more abundant honor to part which lacked. So the parts of your body that lack are made up with the other parts that don't lack. Referring to what? The body of Christ that we all, there's people like in the body of Christ that lack certain things. But we have somebody in the in the body that makes up for that. Because again, like I said, not everybody's going to be good at discerning things. Not everybody's going to be good at prophesying. Not everybody's going to be good at doing this. Not everybody's going to be do, good at doing street ministry. So what we lack, there's somebody in the body of Christ that makes up for it. You get the point? that there should be no schism in the body, but that the members should have the same care for one another. I forgot what schism means. Uh, let me see. Schism is a split or a division between strongly opposed sections or parties caused by differences in opinion or belief. So a split or division between strongly opposed sections of the parties. So in this case, the body. So, and they have different opinions and all that, but the, and the thing now, yeah, it's talking about the human body, yeah, but he's giving an example of the body of Christ. So what is this talk about? He says, no, there shouldn't be none of this, right? So us, we the people of Jesus, everybody watching here, I'm assuming you're a believer, because you only, probably wouldn't be watching this, and if you're not, I recommend you go to John 3, 16 through 18, uh, do the sinner's prayer, and come to the cross. And if you need help doing that, guys, if you are new to the faith that you haven't been saved yet, please contact me, and I will call you personally and help you out with that. My email is right on, um, right on truthradioshow.com. Or just put it in the comment section, I'll get a hold of you. But yeah, so Paul's saying don't have none of this. 
split and diverse between strongly opposed sections of parties. So we got cliques in, uh, you know, like having cliques within the faith yet that opposed other people that in the same faith. And that we see this all the time, that caused by differences in opinion or belief. So the weed and schism between church leaders and politicians. So what is he saying here? Don't, yeah, there should be no schism in the body. That's us. So in other words, if there's a group of people within our community, the body of Christ, right, that have different opinions than other people, and they stop building up these little cliques, that's bad. And this is why Paul is here. The reason why he's here at the Church of Corinth because this exactly thing is going on here. There's division in the church. Now, in today's world, there's big division in the church. There's people out there, uh, you know, that have been brainwashed with dispensationalism, prosperity doctrine. These are satanic doctrines. And it causes major division within the group and the, the body of Christ. That's why we need to help people. And at the same time, try to uh, maintain a level of um, uh, uh, t like teamwork, a level of um, uh, unity, I should say. And whether one member suffers and all the other members suffer with it, while one member is on it and all the members rejoice with it. So he's talking about a team, guys. Again, a team, the body of Christ. Now he's referring to the human body again. I'm, I'm sorry if I sound redundant, but I, but I just want to get this ingrained in your head of what's going on here, what he's talking about. The body of Christ, he's saying. Don't have division in it. Right? The members should be have the one same care for another. So, yeah, we understand there's dispensationalism in the, the faith. There's... Uh, prosperity people and all that stuff, but you know what? Love them, care for them exactly as you would as uh, one of us who don't believe in that stuff, that we know the scriptures. Unfortunately, they're misled by um, demonic doctrines, but if they're true believers, uh, the Lord will eventually get to them or um, he'll allow us to reach out to them. But at the same time, care for them the same as you would anybody else. So if one member suffers, hey, we all suffer with the person. If one member is on it, guess what? We all rejoice with it. Don't be jealous or anything of it. Yeah, let's rejoice with it. And now you are the body of Christ and members in particular. So I hope and pray that you guys got this, but I was trying to say it. Well, Paul, I'm sorry. And God has set some in the church First apostles, secondary prophets, dirty teachers, after the mir that miracles, then gifts of healing, helps, governments, diversities of tongues, different um, like uh, different tongues. And he's saying, hey, are, are they all apostles? Are they all prophets? Are they all teachers? Are they all workers of miracles? Have all of them have the gift of healing? So I'm going to ask you all, yeah, because we all have some of the gift that God's given us, right? This is Paul speaking to them, right? And I'm going to ask you the same question here, talking to you guys direct. So are, are all of us apostles? Are we all prophets? Are we all teachers? Are we all workers of miracles? I wish we could be, but we're not. Have we all have the gift of healing? I wish I had that gift. I don't. Do we all speak this with tongues? No, I don't. And can we all interpret it? I don't, we don't know that. You know what I mean? Like you'll find out eventually if you do, right? But covet earnestly the best gifts. And this is in here, we understand the 10th commandment, I shall not covet, right? But that's in a different way. Like, no, it's don't cover your, your neighbor's house, your neighbor's wife, stuff like that. That's, but covet good things. These best gifts. And yet, show I unto you more excellent way. So here's another thing, guys. Be careful, because I, I've been watching these people for years. 
Bible scholars like Richard Dawkins and people like that, they will throw this out. Oh, I thought it was the 10th commandment not to covet. But Paul's telling people to covet. Well, if somebody brings that up to you guys, you tell them, well, guess what? Covet and don't, you know, that shall not covet, the 10th commandment. It's coveting things that are not yours and everything else, right? Bad stuff, the bad way. But there's a good way to covet. Covet things that are gifts from God. And he says, yet yeah, show I unto you a more excellent way. So I hope and pray that you guys got this. And if you don't, um, you, know, you know, I mean, not everybody can get things at once. Sometimes it takes me three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven times to really grasp something. So do not be ashamed, guys. Put in the comment section, say, listen, Dan, uh, uh, verse six, you talk about this or that. Could you explain that better? Or if you think I made a mistake, or say, Dan, you're wrong about verse 10. And he has why. Tell me. And I'll, you know, be straight up with me. And I want you to do that. Be straight up with me. I'm not going to get mad. Say, Dan, you're wrong about this, and he has why. And I'm going to read it. I'm going to look into it. And if you are right, okay, you will get the praise for it. And I will correct myself real quick. Humbly accepted that. Because teaching the word of God, there's no room for ego. And shame on the pastors out there and everything else that uh, that all they do is cover up their mistakes. They can't come out to say, I was wrong and I'm sorry. That makes you, um, you kidding me? It's, I don't know how many times people did that to me. Dude, I was wrong and I'm sorry. Yeah, no worries. Love you, man. Nothing to, you should not have any kind of ego to do that. To not uh, admit your mistakes. Admit, you don't know how good it feels. When I admit I was wrong, yeah, nobody wants to be wrong. But when you actually know you're wrong and you admit it and you apologize, you feel better. And you just gain that much more knowledge. And like I said, if you guys want to correct me, because the Bible does say what? To challenge every spirit. Do not be afraid to challenge. Don't not be afraid to say, hey, Dan, now verse 3, I don't think you were right about that. And here's why. And I'm going to look into it. But yeah, we'll talk about it. And yeah, all right, yeah, I guess you're right. I'm sorry. You are right about that. And I'll come out the next time and uh, apologize and say this was right. I mean, uh, the, the, what you said was right, whatever the case. So you get the point. Because at first I didn't want to teach the Bible because I was so afraid of misleading people. I, I still am. Don't want to me, me, mislead anybody. Very important thing to do is just not mislead people. <laughs> uh, that's why it took me years to actually start teaching the Bible. Because I was always afraid of misleading people. But now uh, what I figured out, if I work, for, you know, call upon the Holy Spirit and prayer like we did in the beginning of the show, read the Bible in context, you can't go wrong. Look up words if you don't know what they mean. Nothing wrong with that. That's what a Bible study is. Not everybody knows what schism is. Not everybody knows what covet is either. And if you want to know what covet means, it means to yearn or, uh, to possess or have something. To yearn for something or possess something or whatever, to have something. So nothing wrong at all with uh, looking up words. That's what a Bible study is. And this is 31 verses. And I, we understand if you read these 31 verses, you, well, a good reader probably can do this well for less than two minutes. That's not how you read the Bible. You need to really take your time, examine the words, absorb it. And here we are. It's um, 39 minutes into the video. And I know people say, well, what did it take you 39 minutes to read 31 verses? Well, yeah, because it's supposed to be that way. Take your time reading it. Let the scripture interpret itself. And don't take my word, anybody else's word for it. You need to read it for yourself. So uh, check out truthradioshow.com for the list of all our shows and what platform we're going to be on. Uh, we're on YouTube, we're on Rumble, we're on Brighteon, we're on um, um, uh, BitChute, and um, we're going to be uh, going on every site we can just to get the word out there. 
So uh, thank you for tuning to the uh, First Corinthians chapter 12. We'll see you for chapter 13 in this in-depth comprehensive study of the Bible. So God bless, shalom, and you are the resistance.